Yeah. But you know, she's looking forward to that more than you're looking forward to having us, or she's looking forward to having us. You know that, right? Or are those transfer the hot pasta with fresh meat? Very interesting. I didn't know I was a lot of people ask that question. I didn't know that.
one, two, something like that. Okay, it's gonna be really fun. Everyone should come. It's Rabbi Yosef Mizrahi, and I've heard some uh, very good things about him. How, how entertaining and interesting he is. So please come and join us. One uh, another thing that I would like to uh, just put out there: if anybody's interested in sponsoring. The refreshing to the in Torah for any week. If you want a specific week or you want to just let me know whenever you want to sponsor, um, you know, for any time, then just let me know. Send me a text message, email, come over to me, whatever, and let me know, and I will get you on the calendar to, to sponsor the refreshment. One more thing. I really hope that all you guys, since you're learning so well together, you are getting prepared to be able to prepare your own desire store to say in front of everyone. So, I'm waiting for the list of people that are waiting to speak on Wednesday night to share what you've been learning with your partners. So again, come over, let me know, um, text me, email me, whatever, Facebook, whatever it is. Just let me know that you are preparing and you're interested and I'll put you on the list. And tonight, I have the pleasure of wishing a very big and warm mazel tov to Yitzi Arvin, who is a Kazan. tonight. He wasn't able to be here last week, so we caught him for tonight. <laughs> Is it? Last time. Last time. <laughs> okay. Hello everyone, good evening. So first I want to just thank everyone for like to thank everybody for last week. I wasn't able to make it. I was actually in California, and that's where my wife's from. My wife's father was, thank God, in past tense, very, very sick. And last Wednesday night, we sponsored partners in Torah in the merit for his report Shlema, for his speedy recovery. And it's it's literally amazing, and it's, it's done wonders, and it's very, very much a part of what was done over here, I believe, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm 99.9% sure that this was the only group that got together and actually said to him and said words of prayers on his behalf. And it happened to be a really, really bad night last Wednesday night when we were there, but over the next few days, things started progressing and getting much, much better. And at the beginning of this week, he was released from the ICU, and God willing, I just got a message an hour and a half ago that tomorrow he's gonna to be going home. So it went from a life-threatening illness at the end of last week, to him being fully recovered, going home, God willing, tomorrow. So thank you very, very much, everybody, for the prayers. And a lot of people came with me personally and said they took the name from Tehillim from last week, and they started saying Tehillim for him throughout the week. It's, it's greatly, greatly appreciated. Thank you very much, everyone. So um, an interesting uh, experience that, that I had over this past week, we were in California, and one day I was in coffee bean. They don't have coffee bean out here. They have them all over California. And sorry, we're here. It's much, much better than Starbucks. <laughs> so I was in coffee bean, and a friend, my father in law, was there also. He was on the other side. And you know, so I was ordering. He said, Hey, come, let's sit down, let's talk. And he knew my father in law was well. He didn't know exactly what was going on. And he asked me, like, What's happening? What, what, what's the story? So I was telling him, This was, I think it was last Tuesday. It was really, really like, bad. And he told me that, he's like, I got this. He said, they wanted to transfer him from one hospital in the valley, which is where they live, to a hospital in the city, which is much better care. And it was very difficult to have the transfer go through. So this man said that he's gonna take care of it, he's gonna take it under his wing, and I sat with him in the coffee shop for the next hour, and he said that we're not getting up until he gets it done. And he spent an hour calling everyone he knows, and every contact who knew someone, who knew someone that knows someone, and he ended up getting it done. So yesterday, this man called me, and he asked me what's going on, like I've been updating him slowly, but I didn't you know, give him the full update, and I told him he's having this full recovery, and it's really amazing, and he did such amazing work, and I gave him like the final thank you, and he tells me, it's, 
such a nace, it's such a miracle. And I said, I said, yeah, I know, it's an amazing miracle. My father was like really, you know, really not well. And now, thank God, he's pulling through and he's coming out of the hospital. So he said, no, 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 it's a miracle that we met. Like, what are the odds that the minute you were going to be in that coffee shop, I was going to be there and I was going to happen to pull you over to sit down to talk and then just and have nothing to do for the next hour to go through this process and figure out how to get him transferred to the hospital that he needed to be at to have his care in a much better place. And I realized at that moment this, this idea which Nachmanides talks about in Parsha Bo. It says at the end of the Parsha, it says that every single thing that takes place in our life, every, everything that goes on in our life, nothing is teva, nothing is nature. There's a, a song that a big rabbi made in Israel based on this. But it says everything is not, nothing is nature, everything is nice, everything is a miracle. Everything that Hashem does is, is, is really a miracle. And you try to understand exactly what it means, but it hit me that a week ago I met this man, and he put the whole transfer hospital process through and totally forgot about it. And then yesterday he calls me and he explains to me, no, 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 it wasn't, it wasn't a miracle, it's a miracle that he pulled through, but it's a miracle that we met. And it brings out this idea that everything in our life, and whatever we go through, Hashem is really making miracles for us, and making waves, as they say, all the time. So that was just uh, one idea. Another idea is actually from a story that I heard over this past weekend from my brother-in-law. He's the gym director and the coach in a big school in Baltimore called Beth Tefillah. It's like a few thousand person school. He, that's, that's his job. And they brought, as a speaker for one of their events, they brought a woman who is now a professor in Harvard, living in, in Boston. And she, and not in Boston, whatever, in Connecticut, and she came and told the story about her childhood. So she's, she's currently a, a non-religious woman who's Jewish, not religious, and very disconnected. And she was telling her story at, in the morning at this event about how she grew up in Ethiopia, and her family was Jewish and very religious at that time, she was a little kid. And they put the Jews at that point in time into like literally a ghetto, a small little ghetto. All the Jews had to go there and, and hang out there. They weren't allowed to be in the regular part of the city if they didn't pledge allegiance to whatever everybody else wanted them to pledge allegiance to. So these strong-minded Jews went into the ghetto and that's where they stayed. And a couple of weeks into this process of them being in the ghetto, the head rabbi there said that they all have to leave. He said it's not safe anymore and we all, really all just have to escape. We have to figure out how to get out of Ethiopia and get to Israel. So they set out on a journey, and they went through the Sudanese desert for 450 miles, and she recounted the story. She said that there were thousands of them that were leaving. They said there was around 30 people every single day that, were, that weren't making it. And they were just pushing through this journey, and whoever, you know, the, the select few that ended up making it. She was 12 years old at the time, traveled 450 miles with her little sister on her back. She saved her little sister too, like a six or eight year old girl, carrying her barefoot, they didn't have any shoes, going through the Sudanese desert for days on end, 450 miles. And she got to Israel, and she threw away her entire Judaism. She threw it away, she had no interest in it anymore, possibly due to you know, what she experienced because of it, and she lived her life, um, and she's, she was saying the story in the morning, she lived her life still as a completely you know, secular, not connected Jew. So this was Shabbat morning, and a, a few hours later there was what? We have a fire next door. Is it fire? Fire. Yeah. Okay, everybody should exit the building. <laughs> this is another fire drill.